So if you don't know Rolo Tomasi, who is like the godfather to the Red Pill community, which I did not know because I dibble and dabble in it. I'm a part of the Red Pill community, but I'm not totally immersed in this philosophy as he states here. He got some flack because he said that uh, the quickest path to becoming a high value man, he gave an eight point list. And on number three of that was a vasectomy in your 20s. And I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? As many people was like, what are you talking about? Like this list is starting to seem like male feminism to me like it comes off strong just the opposite of what feminists do i mean you know most things you can get on board with but that part right there was a little bit too much number eight i'm gonna go number eight to number one number eight resisting resist easing up on your focus boom to the point play to your strengths build wealth number seven Boom. Who doesn't want to do that? Number six, learn game and networking. I feel like you can learn networking. You can kind of learn some game points, but game, you either have it or you don't. Number five, eliminating all sedations. Get rid of the drink, the weed, all those things that are clouding our minds. Yes, get rid of that. That's a good point. Number four, lift consistencies. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Get your six pack together. Get everything tight and right. That's a good point. And then number three, vasectomy in your 20s. What? Like, why would you... And especially, it says, number two, avoid family creation and then don't get married. Some like Sneeko said, it sounded like the Boss B package to me where they focus on their careers and their degrees and this, that, and other, getting the bag and getting being boss chicks and all of that. And then, you know, freeze their eggs and have babies later on in life. You know what I'm saying? That's what it sounded like to me. Straight feminism. I don't need a man for nothing. All of that. But Sneeko didn't contradict himself greatly between then and now on the same subject. So let's get into it. Now let's go on the vasectomy in your 20s. So I'm going to play this clip by Abbey and Priest where they describe the realities of a vasectomy. Now, quick information on vasectomies. While they are quote-unquote reversible, how reversible they are is based on the length of time that you've had your vasectomy. If you go past five years, the odds can drop anywhere from 90 to 30 to 40 percent. And even then, after you reverse it, being fertile we don't know when it comes back. And so essentially, when doctors allow you to get a vasectomy, they're telling you this is not reversible. So you need to be certain that you don't want kids anymore. You should not think of it as a form of birth control that you can willy-nilly come in and out of. That's why a lot of doctors, if you're below the age of 25, will not even consider you for a vasectomy because they understand how life-changing it is. And though you may not want kids as a young man, they know you might change your mind. So, And see, this is why I say I'm, I'm a red pill type of guy, but I'm real pillish and not a full on red pillar. Cause if this is what it means to be that I'm not rocking with this. Like, cause you, you throwing out stuff like this, floating those little nuggets of information out there like this. And a lot of people are going to follow you blindly. I'm not blind though. I can think for myself, but a lot of people are going to follow you blindly and then go and do something like this and alter their lives forever. Not knowing that they can't be able to just turn it back on and have kids again. You understand what I'm saying? And then you're telling them to avoid family creation and don't get married. And listen, I get family creation ain't the first thing on every young person's list. And it's coming from someone that held out for years and having no children. I'm 41, no children. At least I hope so. <laughs> Pray for me. But look, uh, I get the point of view of not wanting to have kids right away. Or even if you decide that you don't want to have them on all. Whatever your path is. But I know that a baby, even though it's unexpected, has changed some people's life so drastically that it's just unbelievable to watch. I've seen it in men and in women, but especially for men, seeing it from my point of view, coming from men, and I don't have kids, but I've seen a child change a man's life that was just the most gangster, most out here in the streets, gut of getting it in, whatever, whatever. And then that child will flip a switch in him and just be like, I want to be better. I want to be better for my child. And sometimes that right there, having a child can take you to the next level of being a high value man because it turns you into a machine to prepare and produce for your child. And it turns you into a machine that you never would have turned to if that child had to put that pressure on you. Pressure bus pipes. I'm just saying. I've seen it in real life. Might be the reason I'm still broke out here. Let me know what y'all think. Do you think a baby mama would benefit your boy? Little snot nose, little pee camp running around here, crying. At... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make me want to get out here on my hustle. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and so the next step that they that he was saying, the number one was don't get married. Which listen, 
I still believe in marriage, surprisingly, right? But it's a lot of red pillars who don't. It's a lot, and I I understand why they don't. I understand why men of cloth, men of money that have built their lives up, look at marriage and be like, why would I do that? I just did a video the other day, UFC fighter Adesanya, Israel Adesanya. His girlfriend is about to get half of his money just for living with him for three years. They never married. They broke up after three years of being together. And she's probably going to, due to a law that states they lived together for three years, she's probably going to get a half. And this is why a lot of men don't want to get married because of this. Why would I work my whole life, build my whole life up, and then have a woman who wanted nothing to do with me step in, smile for a minute, trick me, Get um, I marry her and then she takes half of my stuff. I can understand why men don't want to do that. Um, but I wouldn't say that marriage is dead just because of that. It, it, it just is something in me that still says marriage is worth doing. Maybe you don't do it with the state. I, I've often thought of why does marriage have to be validated by the state or by the government? I don't really need the government to go to God. This is agreement with God, right? Why we got to do a certificate if we talk to God? God don't need no certificate. Me and, if, if I marry you in front of him at the church, then we marry. <laughs> what we need the uh, people to say something for? We don't need them. Huh? So maybe this is one way to get around it. But as you can see, the law still don't allow for that in most cases because as my man is dealing with, it's still some type of, oh, if you've been living together for this long, then she's still going to be able to get half of your stuff and this, that, and the other. So, you know, it's the it's the dicey little uh, formalities of the situation that make a lot of men want to stay away from it. But depending on what state you're in, you can get out of those and this, that, and the other. But I'm just going to say, choose wisely and, 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 and be picky, but still make a choice. But I still think that if it's for you, marriage is worth it. I'm not going to force what I think on you. If you don't think it's for you, then, hey, live the playboy life for the rest of your life. I've seen some people subscribe to that. Angry man was like, hey, if you can't find a woman that, that match up and do you right and stay, uh, be a bachelor for the rest of your life. That's what I mean by you ain't got to subscribe to what everybody say. Use your mind. Think for yourself. Some things you take from people, some things you leave with them. If you said that being by yourself for the rest of your life is is a viable decision, like you choosing that, it, it means that you ain't, I don't think you've been searching hard enough to find somebody to match you out here, pretty much is what I think. And if you just make it the choice to just be a bachelor for the rest of your life, it, it's, it's, to me, I think it's an unfulfilling life. And this coming from someone, I'm single as well. And that's partially because I'm still working on myself. But I don't think just because I'm working on myself that I should be preaching to everybody, oh, stay single for the rest of your life. You don't need no chick. Nah, I don't think that's the way to go, brother. You know, get, whoever I'm talking to, get yourself together and find you somebody. And I'm not saying you have to be married to not do that. But, you know, probably want to be with someone because it's going to get lonely. Trust me. Single people be lonely. All that single, all of that out in the club, they be talking all that junk. Yeah, they get to the crib. I done got to the crib and got the dial of the numbers they ain't pick up. I know, you know what I'm saying? So if you make it to 60, 70, 80 years old and you need somebody to help you, this, that, and other, and just be with you, sitting on the porch, rocking in the rocking chair that you ain't going to be lonely. Oh, you're going to be lonely. For sure you is. So don't buy into this bachelor for the rest of your life type of ideal that everybody's selling you you know what i'm saying the people live different lifestyles and, and come into things at their own pace in their own time and that's fine come into your own pace at your own time but if you find yourself listening to people like rollo tomasi and just so you know this is a little nugget i discovered about him as well this is rollo tomasi saying the n-word play that clip and i have the man with the legend uh john fitch who's gonna tell me how to chuck it out <laughs> so 
I'm going to just say, man, why, why watch your mouth before somebody choke you up? You know what I'm saying? White folks get real bold when they get a following and get behind these computers and get to talking reckless, you know, but it is what it is. So let me just say, when you worship in any so-called leader that you come across, don't ignore that other side of them when you come across that as well, because everything about them ain't going to be right. I mean, listen to them on some things, but be able to decipher what is for you and what ain't. Have a mind. You don't just have to blindly follow Tomasi into his little army of, you know, you don't have to do that. You can think for yourself. You you know when to put your feet in, put your feet out. Dance, dance, dance dancing all about. Which was the hokey pokey. You you know the song. I forgot it, but you know what I'm talking about. But this is your boy P. Camp, man. You don't have to agree to this male feminism thing that is going on because a lot of them are going to jump in and out on these talking points. Even in this same video, I was watching where old Shake Duke Jackson when he was talking with Abba and Preach did. Sneeko, one minute, talking against the red pill. Andrew Tate that denounced the red pill. His brother, other Tate that denounced the red pill. But yet, they were all good and fine when the red pill was getting money. There was all these red pill uh, platforms and, and shucking the job on everybody and laughing it up like it was not, like it, like everything was all good. Charleston White, I did a video on him. He was over there with Fresh and Fit. Everything was all good. He had no problem with him until they told him they wouldn't go pay him to come back the second time. Then he went off. Oh, y'all some bums. Y'all some scrubs. Y'all can't get no women. Y'all ain't got no women to cook for you. This, that, and the other. Call them all type of names. It's it's funny when it's good one minute and it ain't the next. It seems like, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not going to get into that, but I'm, I'm just going to say that some of these dudes go a little far off the ledge. And it sounded like male feminism to me. And that ain't the lane you want to be in. But this is what P. Kemp, you tell me what you think, what you don't think. Uh, get off the ledge, man. Think for yourself. Take some of the talking points. Let them keep some of the talking points. You ain't got to kick them off, you know. But get at your boy. Let me know what you think, what you don't think. Get at your boy. I done said that like a thousand times. I know. Leave me alone.